Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We want to go to prayer. We want to pray that God will pour out his spirit upon us tonight. That God will touch our brother in a special way. Unctionizing him, anointing him with the anointing that can only come from on high. We want to pray for clarity of thought, clarity of mind, and clarity of speech. And we want God to anoint us as well so we may receive what God has for us tonight. We want to continue in prayer one for another. We want to continue to, to pray for a special physical touch for, for Sister Wooten. Continue our prayer for Sister Black and Sister Hatfield. And for each and every one of us tonight, those of us who may be feeling a little uh, under the weather tonight. But what we want, we want the Holy Ghost conviction tonight. We want the Spirit of God to come in a mighty way. We want the Spirit of God to manifest itself tonight through Holy Ghost conviction. We want lost souls saved tonight. I just pray, it is my heart's desire, that God will touch, touch us tonight. And I pray. And I pray that we be mindful, that we be obedient to the nudge and the yearning of the spirit. I pray. I pray. Yes, sister. I love you. I'm so thankful for all you've done for me. Thank you for everything you've done for me. You put that song on my heart, I think, was last night. I just want to see you so safe and see you. Praise God. Everything I possibly can. Praise God. Praise God. Yes, sir. In the spirit of prayer, you know, last night the message was about the four men carrying the man down to Jesus. Well, we need to be committed in prayer to lift Sister Wooten to the Lord. Yes, sir. For healing and have the faith to do that. Yes. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, prayer for some of the some of the men that are trying to walk the walk to, to be strong. The, probably their worst enemy is the guys that are around them that think it's cool to talk about partying and, <coughs> and, and this, you know, even where I work, I'm just talking about that. Hey, come on, you know, let's talk about this. I'm here to work. You know, I'm here to work. That stuff will cost you a lot of money and your soul. <laughs> more than more, more than more. So, yes. I mean, this place has been a blessing because, you know, all some guys that have been here as long as me, let's just say that, I'm not going to be So some guys that have been here as long as myself, including the staff, knew that, you know, the, the industry that I was in and, and just, you know, the whole money race is what I make now. Ha ha, you know, and then look what I can get. Ha ha, and then look what I can do. Ha ha, I'm awesome. Hey guys, you know, and I came from that too. And I, this place gave me a break, and now I'm back being really dead serious about walking Christian walk. Come on. You know, the guys are trying to elbow me. Oh, come on, you make money, you know? Come on, you know you want to do this. And I'm like, no, I really don't. And, I, and, and the staff knows here, I don't say this stuff to kiss up to them. I, I benefit, this, it doesn't benefit me winning them over. It's like what they tell us. You don't benefit. You know, what are you going to do? You know, practice on them? And convince them that you're a Christian? What's that going to do for you when you leave here? Nothing. Well, nothing. Either you mean it or you don't, you know. And so it's good when I, you know, I can stick my earbuds in and listen to like instrumental music or whatever, you know, a little bit of mellow music or whatever, and just tune them out and do my work. And then, you know, they're not really, they're not really a threat to me, but I, but I know that they know I'm different because I don't talk the way they talk. So they try to be like, come on, hang out with you guys, talk the way we talk. No, <laughs> I'm here to make money, and that's it, you know. To, so, amen. Uh, this place has been a blessing. Amen. Amen. Brother, I came here from the edge of the abyss. I was deep down in the abyss at one point. And the Holy Spirit directed my footsteps to that gate right out there. And even though I backslide from time to time, I let my anger come out. And I let my emotions come over me now and then, especially when I see and hear some of the behaviors. And some of the things that go down around me, 
in this kind of environment, I pray that the Lord will help me curb my tongue and to stay my hand and to stay on the path. Amen. Praise God, Mark. Praise God. I just got a song that, I, that the Lord just put into my memory, um, and it's about the body of Christ. I need you. You need me. We're all a part of God's body. Stand with me. Agree with me. We're all a part of God's body. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. I prayed for you. You prayed for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. It is His will that every need be supplied. You are important to me. I need you to survive. Yes, Tony. I'd like to praise the Lord and this campus again. Um, I've got more news just yesterday. <coughs> so us here that I now have a case where you can help with me, or help me with getting onto the proper medications to help me with my issues. And I'd like to thank Pastor Wood, Pastor Jerome, Mr. Bob for being here for me as well as the other staff members all having my ups and downs. And I somebody to talk to. I'd like to say thank you because you brought me here to help this church as dorm captain while I'm going through my ups and downs and seeing my pets of where I need to be, where you'd like me to be. When I was growing up, I believed in God, but I questioned God. 
whether he was truly there or not, that he was the one who was giving me the miracles to help me. Every four years, relocating me, starting out with nothing, almost on the streets, if not on the streets. Be here at Graham and his son Jesus, and help bring other souls to him when I'm able to. I really want to thank God because if it was not for the fact of me losing everything that I had and going out there on the streets because of no wrongdoing, I seen every single bad thing out there. So I want everybody to understand here you guys are very blessed. Very blessed. Being a white man out there and a black man in their religion. It's not, it's very hard on the streets because if you don't do drugs, you're either a snitch or you're working with the cops and you're going to wind up dead. <laughs> you got to do drugs to make yourself not. In life, you know that it needs to be ripped away from you. When I say ripped away, I mean nothing. I have nothing left. My father said I'm not his. My mother now is so much me because of the fact that every time I do good, she always seems that I wind up on the street. Not wrong doing, but because. Wrong situation at the wrong time. I work with the wrong person, he does wrong. I go and do good. I don't do drugs until I am out on the streets where I have no other choice but to fit in with the people around me. I don't like drugs. I love my house, my car. The material things people don't care about, they're nothing. Joy, happiness, man, that means broke. Be the happiest man alive. Right. Not me. Not had. My two dogs are, are dead now because of the fact that I worked for the wrong man and did the wrong things because I had to. But if I didn't, would be taken away. I got manipulated by the devil. And the devil put me out on, on the street. And I lived from it. I learned from it. And I gained a lot of respect from everybody outside these doors to know that I can walk out that street. I don't have to do drugs because they know that I'm not a cop, I'm not a saint. I just have respect that if I'm doing drugs, it's because I'm trying to feed into the wrong crowd. And you guys understand that this is so much of a blessing, and if you are unhappy and unmiserable, there are other options, okay? This place salvation was, where do I show up and I die, man? I don't want to just die in the streets and just be poop. Seem to be wrong because I'm this man living on the street and I'm a white guy in a black man neighborhood. Well, I came here and I had I had nothing to bring. I had a bag with two pair, I mean a pair of boxes and I threw it all away. I said, the new beginning. I want to see the man everybody keeps talking about. Now once have I ever stepped foot in the church, never preached about it. I, I didn't even like religion. But I will tell you right now, religion brought me back to life. This right here brought joy into my life, the love. Just the humbleness. And they never ask for a dime. They never ask for anything. They just ask you to do it for them. Pick up the thing. Give me help. Make it. Preach the balance. That's why the man died on the cross. Because he was trying to show the world that they didn't have to live in a world of sin. If you're going to complain about the fact that you're having a bad deal because, oh, you know what, you're getting Go somewhere else and you have a knee in front of the other sandwich. Stand before the next man that wants to eat that spaghetti and is very happy to eat that spaghetti. And we're going to eat it all because of the fact that you see a man over there that's not eating three days and that might be the last meal you might have. You might have to sacrifice the meal. Sacrifice that meal for somebody. Have hope, have joy, have pride to enjoy life. You guys, I see are just miserable half the time. And I try to bring joy in here and I see smiles on everybody's face. And going outside there and pulling myself into the jungle with it, I lost everything again. My phone, my wallet, everything's just been taken away from me because I didn't care about where I lived. I just kept there. You know what? I'll come back. I'll do what I gotta do. I'll come back. No. I screwed up. That's why I'm outside there. They're bending the rules for me and giving me more trouble. You have to bend the rules a lot. A lot. Brother, can I? Marathon. Hey, now, if you guys break the rules, you don't care. 
Matt, Matt, hear me out. Hear me out. I appreciate what you're saying, Matt, but this this isn't the time for that, Matt. I just, I just want to let everybody know. I'm thankful for all the love I have to give. This is the time to vent. This. We appreciate you, man. We appreciate you, man. We pray for you, man. Any other prayer requests this evening? <laughs> yes, Michael. Just uh, pray for my brother. Um, he had um, a blood clot in the leg. And, um, you know, we thank him for a uh, brand new lot of life. And I lost three siblings in the last two years. And, you know, a uh, brother and two sisters. So just keep him in your prayers. I love him dearly. And, um, you know, we thank him for a lot of things. There are times when you need to be selfish when you deal with God's concern in your salvation. I get with you. Yes, yes, Tony. Yes, sir. Brother Black? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Carl? Like uh, for our extended family, my brother-in-law was laid to rest today, 24-year veteran with the U.S. Marines, 45 years old. Just, uh, okay. like prayer for that, for that family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, Corey. <coughs> For Desmond, yes. 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 For my family and people in South Carolina. Okay. Good. Any others before we go to prayer? Yes, Robert. For uh, military, past, present, and future, and their families. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, continue prayer for our country as well as uh, lawmakers on the federal level, state level, local level. They all need the help of the Lord as well as we. Okay, let's, uh, let's stand for prayer. Brother Popa, would you be so gracious? Father, we love you just tonight, Lord. We're so grateful, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord. Blessed Father, you've looked down upon us, Lord. You see us as we are. You see us, Lord. You hear us, Lord. Oh, blessed Father, we need you for such a time as this, Father. Oh, Father, without you, Father, who are we? What are we? Oh, Father, reach down tonight, Lord. Touch every soul present tonight, Lord. We need thine help in a worse way, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, come. Come, Father. Oh, God, reveal yourself so yourself tonight, Lord. Oh, Father, reach down, Lord. Touch Sister Wooden in a mighty way, Lord. Father, you know what about Sister Wooden, so I bless her. Touch her, Lord. Have thy blessed way with the Lord. Oh, Father. Oh, be with Sister Wood tonight, Lord. Be with Sister Hadfield, Sister Black, Lord. 
Oh, Lord, for those that have lost lost ones tonight, Lord, reach down and touch them, Lord. Grant them peace, Lord. Give them comfort, Lord. Give them rest, Lord. Strengthen them in a mighty way, Lord. Grant them understanding, Lord. Oh, Lord, wrap your loving arms about them, Lord. Oh, blessed Father, we're so grateful and thankful, Lord, for this campus, Lord, for your work, Lord. Oh, blessed Father, tonight, Lord. Oh, Father, we love you. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Let your gracious we hand love you, of Lord. mercy be upon our preacher. Oh, God. Anoint him from on high, Lord. We ask oh, you to help him here, Jesus, to preach. Oh, oh bless you, Father. Lord, we pray that thou would help him, oh, God, oh, just to answer, dear Jesus, some questions oh, in his lives and hearts through the word of God, we pray. Praise God. In precious way tonight, dear Jesus. Praise Lord, God for so much for what you do. Glorify your Praise God. God. Your hand upon this service and every man and woman that's here. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Ushers, come forward, please. My Heavenly Father, as we collect this money, Heavenly Father, use it for your will, my Heavenly Father. <coughs> Whoever lays their hands on this money, let it be for your will. Let your will be done, my Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your generous giving. Thank you for the offertory. Let's prepare our hearts as best we can to receive what the Lord has for us this evening. God bless you, brother. Thank you, brother Jerome, and uh, good to be with you again this evening. It's been a good day. I hope you had a, a good day. I know, uh, I know some of you are weary tonight. I know you are. You look tired, some of you. Some of you just look, you know, but some of you look tired. Some of you have yawned a little bit. And, you know, you know, a yawn is contagious. If you see somebody yawn, and I'm up here looking at all of you guys, 
And here this guy yawns and this guy yawns. And if I'm just pointing at you, it's coincidence. But uh, I one time asked a bunch of little kids, a bunch of little children. I said, do you know anything as contagious as a yawn? And a little girl real quick put her hand up. She says, a smile. <laughs> she said, a smile. Well, I don't know that we want to practice smiles tonight because uh, we maybe feel more like yawning. But uh, what a privilege for my wife and I to be here with you. It's, for me, Saturday night, it's, it's gone kind of fast. Hard to believe that tomorrow will be the last day and then and we'll be moving on. But uh, we'll have thoughts of you different times and think about you. And, uh, and I want you to know, I've enjoyed listening to your testimonies and your comments. I don't know you well enough that, you know, I, I don't know your background. I don't know all of what you're saying sometimes. But, but it's very important to you. And it's very important to God. And, and I don't take it lightly either. I mean, it's just it's part of your story as to either where you've been or where you're at or what you're hoping for. And uh, those are little things that life is made up of. And all of our lives uh, are different, but it'd be surprising the similarities too in our lives, no matter who we are here tonight. Uh, it, it would surprise you sometimes that maybe Maybe someone else that you'd never think has the battles that you have, has, has battles. I, uh, I know some things are difficult, difficult to work through. And uh, some of our habits really get a hold of us. And I'm not putting anybody down for that. Uh, some things that you guys have as as habits and maybe addictions I never faced, but then maybe some things I faced, you never had to face. But I am convinced, even if I don't know from personal Jesus cares and knows, he's interested, and he can help you. No matter what the need, what the need is, he can help you. There's a passage of scripture I felt to look at tonight. Uh, really often, I think, it's, it's used in beginning. But I couldn't get away from it. It's Psalms 139. Psalms 139, you'll recognize it a lot in revivals, I think. I'm amazed that David... <clears throat> who wrote David got to the place that he got what we're going to look at this evening. Psalms 139 God Try me and know my thoughts and see in the way everlasting. If I, and if you mean. It'll not go unanswered. Now, how you feel about it, fellas, but if I'm going to open up my heart, and my thoughts included, I don't know anything that I'd rather have look at all of that search me than God. 
than God. I say that carefully because I've got a few friends. I hope you do. We talked last night about a guy that had four friends. Helped him get to Jesus. I think I've got some friends, Brother Wooten, that I could tell on my heart as much as I know of it and my thoughts. And they would care about me and try to understand and not tell everyone. couldn't do anything about it. And to me, fellows, that's the importance of God doing the searching. Think about it. Father in heaven, please, on this Saturday night, you touch weary bodies and minds and help us for just these few minutes that we have together to consider this familiar scripture and help us to give serious thought, Lord, that perhaps you would come on purpose tonight and give us the opportunity that we could pray. You would do that. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Be seated. <clears throat> when David asked God to examine his heart, his life, and see, see if there is any wicked way in me. You know, he's not contemplating what I might do tomorrow. He's talking about what I am today. What I am today, what I am on the inside will tell on me in my life so that what you see is an outcropping, an evidence. If you watch me and converse with me and are around me enough that you can determine what is really genuine, you know, not put on, not pretend, but the real genuine, then you'll have a glimpse of what's down in my heart what's on the inside. Because, you know, you, you, can't, you can't really discern readily what's in a guy's heart or what's in a guy's head or what's in a guy's thoughts. You know, they used to say, a penny for your thoughts. Can't be they thought our thoughts are worth a whole lot. <laughs> A lot of things, a whole lot of things can be beneath the surface that what we see and what you see is, is not just naturally the real. We can fool people, you know, some of the time, maybe not all the time. But boy, it's hard to figure some people out. Not you, of course, but, you know, some of us. It's, it's hard, hard to figure them out. But, you know, I thought, it, I thought, really, this is an examination. An examination. I don't know why, but I was never overly excited about exams. Whether they were to determine my physical well-being or my superb intelligence, <laughs> I 
we might as well laugh. Quit trying to judge what you think is in me. <laughs> I told people, I've admitted, Jerome, I've admitted down across the years, I said, you know what, when it comes to intelligence, I was not valedictorian. <laughs> now, if you were, guys, that's okay, although very few people like valedictorians. They're in the same classification as tax collectors. <laughs> I tell people I may not have been a valedictorian, but I'll tell you what, they knew I was in the running. I was back there in the pack. I could have been. I think in my graduating class, there was only about 47 that beat me. <laughs> not bad. Now, I understand I didn't have a big class, but I, I was the one that kind of in the grading curve kept it down where it more ought to be. If you, know, if you know what I mean. You used to take the best grade and the worst grade, and they'd average it out and kind of grade the rest of us from that. Well, I was helping to keep it down to help the guys, you know, that couldn't get it. I told them, I said, I was extremely intelligent, but I have, in fact, I have a degree. I graduated from college. I have a degree. So I tell people I am intelligent, but I've chosen to kind of work undercover. <laughs> so people won't know it. And by and large, I've succeeded, Brother Pope. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I never particularly like grades. I mean, I mean, tests, tests. It'd be all right if they wouldn't give you the results. But um, here... And, and there's all kinds of tests. You know, think about it. I, we're not gonna we're not gonna go over it all tonight. But all through life, we have to take exams. You know, to do a myriad of things, you got to take exams. I, I didn't stop to take time to make a list of them, but I I can remember all kinds of trauma growing up because I was facing a deadline for an exam. I, I had to go take a test, which you did too. I had to go take a test in order for them to let me out on the highways and byways with my car, or my dad's car back then. I had to drive to Countersport, Pennsylvania in a snowstorm, it happened to be a snowstorm, to take my driver's test. My mom, went with me and she drove and pulled up we couldn't even get into the into the place we could get up in front of it snow everywhere she pulled up to a snowbank and I got out in a snowbank to walk in and and the thing that scared me was that I'm here to take my test I know how to drive a car I know how to drive a tractor I know how to drive a truck but I never drove one with a state policeman <laughs> sitting next to me. Now, I've had some come up to the car that I've driven since, but, but to sit in the front seat with me, just him and me, and whether I get a, a driver's license or not depends on his evaluation of how well I do. I'm not going to bore you with it all, but there was so much snow when I went to take my driver's test, which this will help you to understand how qualified I am to be behind the wheel. That he took me out, I made a left turn, went down that street, one block, made a left turn, went down that street, one block, made a left turn, come back around so that I made a complete circle, that's a square, and pull back up where we started, and it's so stormy that he doesn't, there's no place to parallel park. I think he was scared to ask me to back it up anywhere. He just pulled me up to the spot where we had got in and gave me this critical command, do not 
park me so close to the bank like you did with your mother that she had to get out in the snowbank. I didn't even bother to tell him. My mother parked it that I had to get out in the snowbank. <laughs> I just remember that exam and, and how as a boy, I should have, I should, you would have been braver. It wouldn't have bothered you, but my, the trauma. And I have nothing against the policeman. I mean, I, I, I didn't even tell you, you know, Rachel and I have three boys. One, my oldest is a preacher. My, my middle boy works in graphic designing, and, and my youngest boy is a, is a deputy sheriff. So he wears the badge, and, and he's watching for me to come into his county <laughs> because I'll guarantee you he'll pull me over. I guarantee you will if he gets a chance to. Probably even find me. I don't know that, but, but all kinds of examples. All kinds of exams. I myself, I've never really liked doctors' exams. I mean, when you get to be my age, you have to have them. I dread going into a doctor now because I'm, I'm 71. I go in there, I've got stuff wrong with me that I never had wrong with me before. <laughs> And I'm old enough to know that they don't make parts <laughs> that are just perfect. But David's not talking about getting a, a, a driver's permit or college entrance exam, wants to score good, yes, sir. or even a physician's or a dentist's appointment that aren't always peaches and cream. David come to the point or the place, and he needed to, that you and I ought to come to sooner or later, really sooner, better than later, where he began to look at what really matters in life. Somebody mentioned it tonight in testifying about getting to a point where, you know, you get to a point, you, you wonder, where am I going to go when I die? What, what's going to happen? Well, that's a legitimate thought. It can, it can, it can scare you sort of silly if you, don't even, if you don't have any logical explanation or any, any measure of of reasoning to give you hope. And, uh, and so I think it's important for us to get to a place where, we're, where we will submit to an examination by the Spirit of God, uh, maybe the Word of God, maybe the preached Word of God, a chance for God to personally Speak to us. Now, I do know this, guys. God knows how to speak to you. Sometimes our problems have got us so tangled up in all kinds of things. There's so many little nuances that I have to scratch my head sometime to know how Brother Wooten to help some people. I believe there's help for them. I really do. But they're so messed up. Their life is so entangled and in relationships and involvements and, and, and sin. And sin has consequence. I mean, it's a, it's a serious thing when somebody goes to, to settle up the sin question in their life, especially if they're aware that, you know, I told you God made me make restitution. I had to take that thing I stole back or at least go back and admit I did it and pay for it. I had to make restitution. So it's not easy sometimes to look at that bundle and say, you know what, I'll jump in and say, okay, yeah, me too. Let me get in line. Go ahead, lay it on. But when I read this, and I was thinking about it today, I thought, David, it, it wouldn't have done you any good 
unless you were willing to submit to the exam. I mean, just to say, search me, O oh God, and have absolutely no plan to do anything. Why would you waste your time? Why would you just play church? Why would, what, what good would it be to just act quote unquote religious about it? I'm willing preacher to, to think about it serious and ask God to examine me. But when we ask God to examine us, nobody else because it's not their business, can step in and take over. We've got to be willing to let God come. And if needs be, one on one. Now listen, he's able to do that in a public place like this, where there's lots of us I know because that's the way he dealt with me. I got saved in a revival meeting. There were a, a bunch of other people there, not as many as here. It was a little crowd, but there were quite a few other people there. But God came to deal with me, and God dealt with me right in the midst of those other people. And to my knowledge, he didn't disturb them. Not about me, he didn't. Not about what mattered to me, he didn't. But God is capable and able. The Spirit of God can deal with you, personally talk with you, reason with you, reveal himself to you, make himself real to you. Right in the midst of a crowd like this, while you look around and say, well, what is this? What is this? What it is, is God is showing you attention. God is interested in you. He's not mocking you. He's not teasing you. He's not belittling you. If he were going to do that, he'd call your sins right out and announce them to all of us so that we could know what a scoundrel you are. God can keep secrets, guys. But it doesn't mean he doesn't know. He hates sin. Hates sin. Sin took him to Calvary's cross. But he was willing to go there because he loved sinners. <coughs> he loved me when I was altogether unlovely. David got to the place where he was fed up with his sin and his life. Somebody talked about that tonight in some way, too. It's a gift of God that if he can get us to that place, that, that he can simply say, guys, I know. I know where you're at. I know what you've done. I know your entanglements, you know, whether it's liquor, whether it's tobacco, whether it's drugs, whether it's sex, pornography. I know your hang-ups. I know what it's done to you. I know where it's taken you. But listen, he can tell us, I know where it's gonna take you. It'll take us to hell. What I like about Jesus, it's almost as though he said, but I'm not going to let them go to hell without getting in their face and trying to get their attention. Not to irritate them, not to antagonize them, but to try to whisper to them, I went to Calvary for you. I died on an old rugged cross for you. 
I didn't do that just so that they could come up here and lead you in a number from the songbook that sounds pretty about all that. I did that in a real way to change your life, to give you hope. But before we can get any help, we've got to submit to the exam. I had to go to the doctor one time because of some some evidences that there was something wrong with me. And so I went to the doctor. I don't like to go to doctor. I like doctors, but doctors are sadistic. <laughs> they stick needles in you, wiggle them all over and draw out seven or eight pints of blood. Oh, man. Oh. But I had some things that seemed to indicate, you wouldn't know it, would you, to look at me? It seemed to indicate there was something wrong. So I had to go to the doctor. And so like David, I said, search me. Search me. Well, he didn't search my heart, but he dug far enough he should have found it. I mean, you, you've got to submit to the exam, and, and in order to see the result, you've got to let him do what he's trained to do. And I'll tell you this, guys, the Holy Ghost is trained to do what he does. <laughs> he is. I, I don't necessarily like you prodding into my private things, but I'll tell you this, God can do it. Amen. He's the expert. So I had to submit to the test. And the test was invasive, uncomfortable. It was extensive. It involved biopsies. And those, in turn, had to be sent away for more tests. So that this particular test I'm thinking about wasn't for a driver's license, but this particular exam that I had to go through turned out to be a more lengthy procedure than what I had anticipated. The length of time that God deals with you is between you and Him. Amen. Amen. Really, really, don't worry about being pushed into a box or a timetable. Now listen, revival tries to open that box to give you ample invitation and opportunity, if needed, to pray and to, and to seek God and to get help. To get help. Many people have gotten help at an altar of prayer, but God can meet you at your bedside or, or, or by the Davenport. Now that's an old term, meaning couch. God can deal with you in his own timetable and yours and on your level. He knows your language. Some of you know Spanish because you've sang in Spanish here. I, Believe you me, no comprehendo. <laughs> Except we bished. <laughs> but I had to submit to the exam and see the result. And you know what, guys? The result wasn't what I wanted to see. He said I had cancer. I didn't feel like I had cancer. I didn't feel sick, but I had some signs that somebody, maybe my family physician, detected. So he sent me to specialists. You know, the good thing about the Lord in what David was crying for is that he is the specialist. He doesn't have to send you down the line. He can take care of what ails you. 
nothing catches him by surprise. He doesn't have to go back and leaf through the books to try to get updated. He's able. With me, they said I had cancer. Okay, so I had the exam, and I saw the results. I had to submit to whatever it took to take care of the need. And what was for me a physical thing, indeed, is for us a spiritual thing during revival. Uh, it's a wise man or woman that says, Lord, like David, search my heart. Men can't see my heart. They can't detect my heart. But Lord, you can. Know my thoughts. My thoughts. Jesus, the Bible says, knows our thoughts are far off. Our thoughts don't even surprise him. Reading the Gospels different times, people around him were thinking things. And he questioned them about it. He knew it. You know, if I'm around somebody, Jerome acts like he knows your thoughts. <laughs> That's why once in a while when I get around him, I purposely think something else. <laughs> Just to throw him off. You know what I mean? No, because I submitted to the test and saw the results, it demanded a surrender, in my case, to a surgeon. I had to go under the knife. And say what you want, you know, to, to have them wheel you down that, that hall on that stretcher and go into that big room Bright, bright, but cold. Whew. And submit yourself totally to the guy with the <clears throat> knife. That's a scary deal. So I know what it is to have cancer and have to have surgery. Fortunately, it didn't mar my outward beauty in any way. <laughs> as you could see. And for me, the test turned out to be good. Surgery was successful, and as far as I know, I'm cancer-free, as far as I know. So I thank the Lord for that. But, and of course, when the doctor told me that, even though I didn't want to go through the surgery, Brother Wooten, I'd have preferred some other method, but, but the results came back so favorable that I've, I've been so happy that I submitted to the exam, saw the results, and surrendered to what it took to give me the cure. Amen. And really, it's not unlike what I felt just to share with you tonight from David's familiar words. Search me, O God. Try me and know my thoughts, and see, see if there's any wicked way in me, see if there's any cancer, any cancer of sin in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. What David is saying, God, I surrender to you. I submit to you. I have confidence in you that you can make me every whit what I need to be. And guys, he can do that for you. Now listen, we're still human beings. We have an errant mind. We can be mistaken about something. Uh, we're not Superman. <clears throat> we can only lift so much. 
Some of you look like you could lift quite a bit. Some of us are just, we're sticking to five pounds. <laughs> well, you develop different skills. Some of you can really lift heavy loads. Some of us can really run fast, okay? But in closing tonight, revival will most greatly help us if we make up our mind, I'll let God search my heart. And if you'll let God search your heart and purpose to see what he tells you, of your heart and your thoughts. And if there's any wicked way in you, you might not even recognize it. It might be a kernel of anger that you don't detect, but it's down there in your heart. And given the right opportunity, it could explode until you could terribly hurt somebody or yourself. God can see that and say there's a cancer. There's a wicked way in you. We wouldn't even guess it. You might not even guess it. But God sees it. I'm just telling you tonight, guys, it's a safe thing to surrender and let Him do the operating. Search me, O oh God. <clears throat> know my heart. I wonder tonight, as we stand together and bow our heads reverently, <clears throat> the words of David, search me, O oh God. Know me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me, Lord, in the way that's everlasting. Lead me in your way. Lead me in a way that's going to prepare me for eternity. Does somebody need to come tonight and pray? Saying, search me, O Lord. And are you willing to let God do that on a Saturday night? <clears throat> you want to come? Come quickly. I know many of you are tired, but this, this is worth giving our attention and our time to, fellas. Search me, oh God. One's come. Anybody else want to follow? Anybody else want to come? No, my. Lord bless you, man. Anybody else want to join these? This is all about you. This isn't about anybody else that's come or hasn't come. It's all about you, you and God. Anybody want to come? <coughs> want to come let us let us have a time of prayer with you before we leave amen amen anybody else yet this last call tonight on Saturday night for you if you need to come the Lord's speaking to you why don't you step out Come and talk to Jesus. Let go and let God have his way in your life, man. You'll never, ever regret it. He can make a change that's needed and that's real. Amen. Amen. Going to close in prayer even while I'm praying if you want to come.
please step out and come. Otherwise, come and pray with these couple of guys that are here, fellas, and, and you'll be dismissed for Saturday night. Let's trust God to give us a good day tomorrow, the Lord's Day. But while I pray, if you've got a need, you're welcome to come and join these at the altar this evening. Father in heaven, thank you for the privilege of this Saturday night service. Thank you, Lord, for the men as they've come in, the ladies that are here. But, oh, God, I pray tonight, help us like David to open up to the searchlight of God. Do your divine exam upon our life. You know it all together. You know where we're at. You know where we need to be. Help these that have come to the altar to pray, oh, God. Make, give, get them all the way through. Help them, oh, God, tonight to be clear with you. And then, Lord, the rest of the men. There might be some here that didn't step out but they've got a need. They know it and you know it. You're able to help them. Oh God, answer prayer. Go with us now. Keep your hand upon us tonight and prepare us for the day tomorrow. And we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys. Amen.